Right, get that present out. Right, so you obviously had COVID, didn't you, right? Mm-hmm. And that must have been when your hair started to socially distance. Oh, fuck off, man. Fucking so prick. I thought I would help you out, mate, and get you some caffeine shampoo. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> I didn't want to be cheeky, right, and get you the double strength one, right? Because it's, it's not just feeling that bad, but I thought we, I'd help you out. We shaved my mate Coyle's hair after, a like, I think it was just just before Is prom. Is that the with the luscious locks? Uh, no, he's not got luscious locks yeah. anymore anyway. No, um, but we shaved his hair like two weeks before prom and we all bought him that. <laughs> and do you know what the worst? Did it work? Uh, no, I did it fuck. No. He, all his prom pictures, he's got that buzz cut. <laughs> I led, I was, so we we were all like drawn, I started like drawing on his face and all that. Just, mm. you know, we were all at like 17, so drawn cocks in his face. That's Naturally. great, that's great humour. It's kind of gay, man, isn't it? It's like very gay. <laughs> I go into his mouth. So like, that's <laughs> fucking well funny. And you want the drone? And <laughs> <laughs> he's back in him. Oh, mate. And then obviously it escalates because mm. he was asleep for like four hours whilst we were all getting steaming. So as as you get more and more steaming, you're just like, right, he's not waking up. So just uh, escalates into it. So he shaved his head. But the best part was <laughs> he got up in the morning, like about seven in the morning. He went on Twitter because that's what everyone, mind everyone used to use Twitter all uh. the time. He looked at Twitter and somebody retweeted his head because we'd tweeted pictures of No way, you bastards. Do I hear something really fucked he up? Went, he went to grab, he went to, that, and that's what he done. He felt his hair because he realised it was his, <laughs> then started freaking out. Then he went to grab a corona out of the case and all his hair was in the case. You fucking bastards, mate. That's so sick. Mate, see one time at school, uh-huh. this is so fucked up, right? A guy went to sleep, but now you've got to kind of Traps, no camping traps because I didn't have a weird music teacher. But uh, you go like the camping traps away and you're kind of in this wee hostel. Mm-hmm. Now, this guy for What age are you here? Oh, mate. Must have been 14. Right. Right. We were all 14, so it's not illegal. <laughs> right. <laughs> I didn't do this. Right. I wish I did, but right. Some guy had went up and came in his face. The guy that was asleep. He came all over his face. That's some sort of illegal, surely. How, mate? Just the bros getting together. <laughs> fucking hell. I wish that's I, too I, far. I wish I was every, a guy every school on. has a story that's too far into it. And that's that's well definitely too far, mate. That's like, like, see shaving the hair on that, right? That's border. That's still like, that's border. Kinda, that's a bit too far, but coming on somebody's face. Highly illegal. That guy must but be. But how did he get hard? That's just, he wasn't gay. He was a heterosexual guy. Had a missus. But he, ma- he managed to just crack one out on this guy's face. What was he like? Was he like watching porn or like was he looking at his face then? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I'm trying to work out the logistics. I don't know, mate, but I remember the guy waking up, obviously, with hundreds of jizz in his face and being raging. And I was like, just like <laughs> at I was like, you <laughs> and he was raging. I was like, you don't have to be so mad, bro. Just get a fucking biscuit. And do you know what's funny about this? So I started cutting today, right? Cause, or yesterday, actually, because I've got a wee bit fat. I've been bulking for like a year. Mm. But <laughs> That'll do it. Anyway, that right, will do it. I had this patch on my stomach. It was like a, it was like a red patch. It just my skin looked different. It looked like just there had a big red patch here, right? And it was there for about five months. Mm-hmm. And I so the first month or two, I was like, "That's obviously going to go away." I'd been shaving my chest and stuff, so I was like, "That's like a rash or something that's going to go away." Were you using Vita or something? I was just shaving myself in the like, well, uh, I don't this game. <laughs> just with a razor in the, in the shower. <laughs> anyway, I, I I was there for like six months. And I kept, I started to start freaking out about it. Like people would notice it. Like my dad was noticing it. So he was going, like, what the fuck's that in your stomach? Mm-hmm. And then I tried to book an appointment with NHS and the doctors. They obviously were like, that's not going to happen, mate. We, we don't exist anymore. <laughs> and then. It was dealing with dead people. I started, <laughs> I started Googling it. And then obviously it was like skin rash or it could be allergic to something or whatever. And then one of them was like skin cancer, and I was like, "Well, I'm obviously dying. Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm clear. That's, that's I'm so funny clearly got five things, days to let it to live." Uh, that's, that's, ba- that's basically that's what I do. Like. I even went to Alicante, mate, and when I was sitting in the sun, I was sitting like this. <laughs> oh, it's so self conscious. Yeah, no, just with a just in case the sun came on, because I thought I had skin cancer, obviously. not because I was scared of how fat I was. <laughs> anyway, then I googled it again because my mate sent me. I started talking to, about it to my mate, and I was like, "I'm starting to freak out about this again because I can't get a doctor appointment." And my mate sent me what it looked like again. It was like, oh, it was like a medical thing. And it had some name for it or whatever. And then it was like causes, right? And then one of them was like, again, irritations with shower gel and mm. stuff like that. Maybe like allergic to some yeet. And then the other one was fat rolls. 
And was I looked. Was it fat rolls? I looked down, and the the patch was inside my fat roll. <laughs> Fuck that, sake, man. that I've got from bulking. <laughs> and Wait, got... this, this is happened this year for you, bulking. This is this is only went away two weeks ago. <laughs> and you want to know the big fat part? fuck? <laughs> See, the, so I at the start of the year when I thought my hair was receding, I bought. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh God. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> At the start yeah, of the year, when couch, by the way, when I, re- weird. I need to get like right into the corner, don't oh, you? You feel comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> and when I bought, so at the start of the year, when I realised my hair was receding, I went on a, <laughs> <laughs> I went on a rampage with more plates, more dates. With you know, he's got the hair yeah. stuff. Uh, you know. And I, I bought some of the stuff he was going on about. Mm-hmm. So there was, uh, finasteride, which changes basically changes your hormones it blocks it DHT. Your testosterone that bit, it? It blocks it? dht i can't remember I all the ends and outs mm. but basically when you block dht there's a chance that like other hormones are gonna increase that's so what, uh, i think es- on. yeah i think estrogen estrogen can maybe increase and that's why you can maybe get gyno so i read that as i'm not doing that but it's like one mm. percent like is that that's what it happens to most people get good results but i was like fuck i'm not that bothered about Don't it batch tats, mate. then I, yeah exactly and then i bought i've already got fat rolls patches <laughs> mate. Like a huge red mark <laughs> i've already got fat roll fucking patches and then big juicy <laughs> tits, <laughs> tits, <laughs> mate, fuck that. and then uh he, there was also shampoo that he made you buy and it was called ketoconazole shampoo and when i was looking up the fat patch it was like the solution is ketoconazole shampoo and it was 20 quid and i was sitting there like i fucking got that shit there rubbed in five days it's gone what so it's it's basically like clean some (laughs) it's some sort of some some fat burner aye exactly that's why i'm that's probably why i was strong as fuck in the gym the other day or because i was fat or because you said i need to test you are you on testosterone no mate why do you keep making Roy jokes on Instagram? Right. So because I I was actually looking at it, I was like, he's not on something, is he? No. And then I was like, but why does he keep making jokes for it? I mean, I'm fair to need those, mate. No, so am I. Right. So mate, I had to tell the guy giving me the vaccine that look, mate, I'm terrified of needles, and he had to like he made me lie down on the ground. <laughs> you got raped. I'm putting it there. Hundred percent. That is <laughs> that is not how that happens. <laughs> You're not just sit there, bro. He sucked me off. <laughs> it's just weird, man. Like I came in his face and stuff, and there was like fourteen in that. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no, um, no, see the thing is, right? Um, obviously, like, I've got these big traps. Right? I'm right. just gonna suck myself off here, right? I'm quite a big guy for five foot seven, five foot six <laughs> seven. Uh, but there was this one time in the gym, right? And there was this guy who was roided at his nut. And I was training with one of my guys, my guys, one of my guys, uh, my mates. <laughs> that sounded really weird. One of my guys. <laughs> I was training with one of my mates, and he's just like this skinny guy, and he just kind of started to go to the gym and see the entire conversation. I was wearing this obviously extra medium tight vest. Mm-hmm. The guy wouldn't do. talk at all to my skinny pal. He would only talk to me, and he was talking to me like we were both like this mutual thing where we were on roids. Right. And my mate made that aware, and he was like. I mean, like, did you did you notice that guy mm. <laughs> was roided out his mind? Clearly thought you were on them. Just because he was talking about, like, aye, man, if you manipulate this and do this and that, and I'm like, ah, mm-hmm. hi, cool, man, whatever. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And then as I started posting more pictures on Instagram, people just kept DMing me saying, What are you on? What are you on? And I would just go, nothing, mate. So then I just started, I started just basically posting hundreds of things saying, like, right. did you see the way I put up the day? No. I basically put up this picture. I drank um, nine cans of full fat coke last night. Why? Because I'm super addicted to Coca Cola. Right. Not sniffing nine. Uh, in nine. Nine. So that is equivalent of like 250 grams of just pure sugar. Right. Cut and going well in. <laughs> <laughs> and I basically put up this picture. It's just obviously I'm super bloated today, and I yeah. put it up, and I just go. Like, I put a poll up saying, "Do you think the?" GH has gone too far. Was <laughs> <laughs> I can't stop your voting in the poll. I went, uh, yes, too far, or nah, you should keep doing more. <laughs> and just loads of cunts keep hanging them on all these roids, and I get message for like all these mad bodybuilders. Not nah, what are you doing? Like you should try this. Not nah. I'm like, mate, I'm natural as fuck. Like, I fully believe you then. Aye, mate. And you it's just, funny. I just run because I think it's funny. That's some sort of compliment, aren't it? Right, it is, mate. But Definitely. see, the thing is, like, if I cut, I keep getting called fat. Male, it's kind of accurate. Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> That's like a cause, see when you go fat, oh. like your hair starts to recede. 
They started receding when I wasn't bulking, so you can go fuck yourself. Okay. No, but aye, that's basically just That's it. your last receding joke. That is, mate. I'm, I'm dumbing them down. <laughs> <laughs> but aye, it's just, I don't know, mate. I think it's funny because the more people think I'm enhanced, the more I'm going to post about that I am enhanced, mm -hmm. even though I'm not. Definitely milk it. Aye, milk the shit out of it. That's how, like, every caption is basically, like, wee steroid needles or all that mm -hmm. stuff. And I wonder why I keep getting blacklisted off Instagram. Do you? Because it oh, keeps right, happening mate. to me. That I've been... I called two people a cunt in my story. But how can, you get, how can you get banned for that? So when I write the word cunt, mm. like on the, the text, I always get flagged for it. And see when they, when they flag you twice, I, like I was grown like fuck on Instagram, right? And then the second time I got flagged, my Instagram died straight away. Like started like losing followers, but it was instantly. And I'd been grown for like five weeks. So as soon as it happened, I was like, ah, oh, fuck. Because they deny shadow banning people, but they do. They do, mate. They do. So they completely deny it. And what you have to do is like message them saying here, um, I didn't mean, I actually said it was a native tongue <laughs> in Scotland. Call I had a few in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, they so you have to message them saying it's like, oh, it's damaging me, my brand, bro, and all, all that sort of shit. Well, it is, like it yeah, actually it is. is. And then they they let it go again. And then the other day, I got reported for um, it was something like sexuality or sex sexual scenes were in my video, and it was saying that I was like, so he did have a there was he did have a decade. Like, did I was wanking. <laughs> is they shorts, but they're super short. It might have been on video, but anyway, I wrote, like so that happened again. It happened to me again, mm. and I think it's cause the other day I was making making videos. I was making a video on my stories, and people were like, w "Someone asked me, would you take on everyone or not everyone? Would you take on people that have a lot of fat to lose?" And I said, "I wouldn't take on everyone." I said, <laughs> "Every fat person ever." Yeah. Right. No. The the fat the <laughs> problem of fat people is not solely my problem. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but that's, that's not what I said. I said um, that I wouldn't take on everyone that's like particularly obese because mm -hmm. like a lot of people have more problems than food when it uh, comes to obesity and stuff. Men mentally and then I said about, I, I don't think people realize if you've a load of clients like that, say you've got 30 clients and 10 of them are like not just one training and nutrition, they need all kinds of support outside it. Your, your own brain's fried. You can't handle... Because you end up taking on everyone else's stress, naturally. Like, you do if someone's, like, I don't know... Just, like, I've had clients and, like, their husbands maybe died or whatever. You take on a lot of that stress. What have you done? I refuse to laugh at that. <laughs> I refuse no, to laugh but, at like, that. just... That's an actual thing that's happened. But say, imagine, like, someone just has a lot of stress and they are right, unburdened yeah. on you and it's just stupid stuff, like, they've broke up with their boyfriend or... Do you know what I mean? Or, like, I've had... I've had a client on before, and I'm pretty sure our man was battering her. Rightly so. <laughs> Andrew Tate's number one fan. <laughs> Mate, don't, man. Don't stop um, that girl. Anyway, so I was like, I ca you can't take on everyone, because then you take on their stress. So I make sure that I can help the help the person. Because mm -hmm. you can't help those people as well. What am I going to do? Batter the guy? Batter her harder. <laughs> That's always my solution. <laughs> always helps with domestic violence. Batter her harder. <laughs> then she won't crash you in. Simple. Is that not what uh, See, um, I've put my mic on? Uh, is that not what Priscilla Presley done? Like Elvis used to practice karate on her, right? Guy. And she secretly went and learned how to fight and then one day punched his cunt in. Punched so, Elvis's cunt in? Uh -huh. Did is, he used to batter his wife? Uh, he used to practice his karate on her. So is oh. Elvis the first feminist? <laughs> <laughs> think about it. No, I don't want to think <laughs> he, about your he analogies. He basically forced her, right, get out your comfort zone, go better yourself <laughs> and come back and do me in. Equal rights. You, that's a clip into the that, that you always end up making you say something on this podcast and it becomes one of your stand up bits but it's not but definitely see I was talking to my mate Adam about that so we do like the comedy round up with Paul right uh, uh, Paul's basically you want Paul explain who you are because a lot of people want to I know you've been on three times but I'm actually posting these a bit more instead of like well I'm months. actually people do you know how I would describe you Right. You, imagine you before I imagined Frankie Boyle and Ed Sheeran spawned an egg. Yes. What would come out of it is this. Me. Exactly. Basically. That's what I would right. imagine. That's what I think. But I have now been known as a trans hero. A trans hero? Mate, I'm a trans hero. 
I got 2,000 trans people following me. On what? On TikTok. Because I put out a clip. Of what? That of saying... Basically just put out, factually, this is what occurred, right? Ricky Gervais and Dave Chappelle make jokes about trans people. Mm. And the way they go about it is it's so lazy. Dave Chappelle's part is pish. Right, it is. But the whole point that I said was I just went by factually what occurred. They got people who stuck up for trans rights. Guaranteed, they went against the Netflix rules, right, as well. Um... They got, basically, they lost their jobs due to making an uproar about the Dave Chappelle and Ricky Gervais thing, mm -hmm. trans thing. And Ricky Gervais and Dave Chappelle talk about, oh, cancel culture, cancel culture. But they got £200 million deals. Mm. <laughs> I don't remember getting cancelled and getting £200 million, mate. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I, yeah. And then I basically put it out and it went, like, viral, mate. That one did, did uh, it? And I got, like, 2,000 blue-haired accounts following me. And they were all commenting, going, like, stuff, mate, stuff like this. This man is just fighting for trans people. And I was like, I would fight a trans person, <laughs> but that is about as far as I would go to fight for trans rights. <laughs> you're the only person as well, right? See, when you come on this, you're the only person that takes the name chat shit get cancelled literally and you treat it like a game. But that's, that's the whole point of this podcast. <laughs> that's, that's just the name I came up with 30 seconds into the first podcast. <laughs> the first done. I was going to call it something else, remember? And yeah, I was like, oh, fuck it, I'll call it. <laughs> and then you're like, I fucking go for it. I'll, I, I rape people. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Whoa, mate, I had this joke and I told my missus and it is a rape joke, right? And she went, I, we, sh we shouldn't use that one, Sean. Right? I went, I got any people say that I'm pro rape, but how can I be pro rape? I literally wear condoms. <laughs> and Fucks. I told my missus, I, I like to run stuff by her, right? So, because she won't laugh regardless. And then I can also. But she doesn't find any of her jokes funny. She likes to lie and say she does, but she's fan. She's a fan of James Oldcaster. And I, I mean, you definitely don't find me funny. Mate, he's, oh, he's the most wanky comedian ever. Mm. Right? Uh, don't know who and he is. I'm trying, I'm trying to get this thing, right? I'm trying to be a comedian's comedian. Do you know what I mean by that? Actually, just saying stuff that's funny and not worrying about the consequences like everyone else does now? No. No, no. It means, like, I'm trying to understand every form of comedy and respect it and, and respect the fact that people are going on stage and they are attempting to be funny and trying to make a joke mm -hmm. out of something. So I'm basically trying to not shit on everything all the time, right? Yeah, uh, yeah you were quite bad for that before, oh, huge. But there is at times where I go... So one of my mates done, like, a gig night, right? And all I said was, the people in Love Island... Like, the women are objectively attractive. Mm -hmm. Somebody screamed out to him and says, you're a misogynistic for saying those women are attractive. And I mean, that's not a definition of misogyny. Like, are you mental? Like, yeah. that's just having an uproar for no reason. Like, what's the whole point in Love Island? It is... Get followers. Yeah, but it's also the most get un unattainable looks yeah. go on to that show and fuck each other. Yeah. Right? That's the whole premises, and I don't give a fuck. MD says, like, oh, there should be an ugly version of Love Island, and I'm like, ah, well, you're just basically making those people feel even worse because they're fuck ugly. Yeah. Right? So it, w and it wouldn't work. Yeah. And there is already one like that. It's, uh, it's no, like, was it no Big Brother, for fuck's sake? No, 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 it's no Big Brother. It's where, like, the, the retarded they, people go to each other. Oh, fuck. Um, Undateables. 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 Yeah. That's already the fucking ugly version of Love Island. Great program. Mate, it's amazing. Great program. I love remember, artistic people. Remember Richard? <laughs> mate, Richard is the best. Mate, Richard is a guy that wouldn't go out with anyone that lived outside uh, like three kilometers where he's from. <laughs> I remember one time. She sees Tinder. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, there was one time there was like the woman showing them, showing them the profile. He was from London or whatever. And mm -hmm. he just goes, She's in fucking Kent. <laughs> so good. But it is like, I know obviously that. Katie Price, that Jordan woman, she takes advantage of the fact that Harvey's retarded, right? Yeah. But when you watch Undateables, it's an insight to them trying to find love. And it does make it better, doesn't it? Because it's not capitalizing on somebody who has Down syndrome or autistic, whatever. It's like showing that they can ha live a, a normal life. That's the yeah. great thing about that program. But also how fucking funny they are. Mm -hmm. Like they're genuinely hilarious people. Not to look at whoever said that. That's terrible. I would never say that. But you you can't really look at it like that because that, that's the, see if you've got if you've got someone close to you that does have something wrong with them mm -hmm. that's like the way you can that like you do try have a laugh with them 
Of course, mate. Like that's the whole. That's what you would do. Just because they like they have these. Not laughing at them, but like you wouldn't, you wouldn't be sit there and just try to have a serious conversation, would you? Aye, no. Well, you can't really. Mm. Like, it, uh, it's not because it's hard for. Hey, hey, I'm, I'm not saying I'm bad, mate. <laughs> You're saying, look at this sweat coming off. No, but I don't care. I would say, like, mm. with other people, I wouldn't have a serious conversation because they can't process it. Yeah. Like, they can't. It's kind of impossible for them. But, like, that's the difference between, obviously, Down syndrome and autistic. Into, like, autistic people hyper obsess over something, and they are, like, hyper intellects. Yeah. With specific things. So I would talk shit to one of the retards, but not the other retard. <laughs> Did you want to say that one more time? <laughs> mate, I say it. Do you know why I say it? Paul hates that word. Oh, do you? I'm not a big fan of either. I'm not sure a bunch of readers. <laughs> <laughs> was it and um, and Mong as well? What Mong? That's Mong's such not a. Nice. But that's like up your like when you were in high school, you said that word, didn't you? I think Mong was the most used word in the yeah. um, Glaswegian high school. Was I'd say that was the biggest. It's that funny when they spell that it. That and gay. <laughs> but everyone, had Ever, gay. Ever, everyone everyone's gay. Everything you done or like everything anyone done would have been. Do you put things gay. in your mouth. That's gay. Yeah. There we go. That's what I was like. What did you think of? Like, I, I try. I'm trying to keep this podcast somewhat fitnessy, but I'm not going to because yeah. you, you're, you're not going to talk about fitness. I what did you think? Anyway, of, mate. What did you think about uh, Paddy Bimlet's health and uh, mental health speech after the? Paddy who? Paddy Bimblet. Bimblet. Paddy Bimblet. What's his? What's his name? I think he had a stroke. What's his name? Saying Paddy Bimblet. <laughs> what is it? Paddy, Paddy Bimblet. Pimblet? What are you? Paddy Pimblet. Pimblet? Uh, Paddy Pimblet. How... What did I say? Paddy Bingblet or some shit? Like... <laughs> Bimblet? <laughs> it was like so far off, mate. <laughs> Blit. I just rounded it in his Bingblet. Uh, <laughs> but actually. <laughs> oh. Obviously, I fuck the themes of this podcast, right? Let's right. just chat shit. Obviously, shape. I'm extremely depressed, right? And I loved it. Shout out, man. Fair play to Paddy, mm -hmm. right? Pure shit. He hit, the message was fucking great. Like, it actually was. That whole thing about you, you'd rather your bro cry on your shoulder mm -hmm. than carry his casket. That's phenomenal, right? But the issue I have with it is nothing to do with Paddy, his message. And I was going to say that I have an issue with it. There's no, no, nobody with, can have an issue with it. The issue I have it. is with the bandwagon jumpers again. Like, I said this before when I was talking to you. The same people who I see in person. They're like, aye, man, mental health doesn't exist. Like, depression doesn't exist. You're, you're just looking for attention. And then they'll fucking share Paddy Pimblet's thing. It's yeah. like, you're just doing it for views. That's like, just humans in general, wagon. though, aren't it? Aye, mate. But if, see, if you have a strong stance and you don't believe in mental health, you're obviously retarded. But you need to actually, you can't just jump on a bandwagon with it. That's the issue I have. Yeah. Like, obviously, man, I'm... I do suffer from it, so I know how hard it is. And when somebody told me that, like, to my face, I was like, it's real, mate. I've got it. Like, yeah, yeah. And I don't tell many people except the thousands that listen to this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> tell, tell everyone I ever meet. Yeah, but the Hello, only my reason name's I talk, Sean. I'm depressed. <laughs> it's happened, bro. I'm actually so depressed. I might kill myself <laughs> the next time we talk. Uh, no, but the only reason I talk about it so often uh, is because I know how hard it is. And maybe some kind of watches it. Well, one day go, ah, man. Like, I'm, I'm starting to get a lot of people mailing me about stuff, mate. Like, oh yeah, I like. How do you deal with that? That's hard to cope with because even even I get stressed out about my DMs, and it'll yeah. just be, mine won't be specific to mental health. But see if someone is like, I've lost all this weight and I don't know what to do, and I'm still not happy and stuff like that. I start getting stressed out about that. Yeah. Or people ask me about stuff, and I can clearly see they've got an eating disorder. I get stressed mm -hmm. about that because then I know they're watching my videos, and I might have said something that they shouldn't <laughs> be listening to. Do you know what I mean? No, not in a bad way. Like, oh, I get you. What? <laughs> this is the thing where, it, like, where I go back to like the trans hero thing. Like, people will see a clip and think I am that one thing. Like, but then I'm not. It's like I've made loads of fat jokes, but if somebody came to me with an actual eating disorder, <clears throat> I would try and help them. I wouldn't actually fucking slag them for it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But obviously not. It's, <laughs> it's, yeah, I'm not like I'm not an actual cunt. Like, I'm not like the worst human ever. I just like to. It's like when I, Paul knows, don't you, mate? Like when I get into that kind of fucking zone, you know, I know, even like on stage and stuff, like I say the most horrendous shit ever, mate. Yeah. But then I come off the stage and I can have a normal conversation and I'm, I'm quite Obviously, sweetheart. you're a normal person. But uh, then as soon as the camera comes on or your chat shit get cancelled, you uh, lose the plot. Mate, it's this podcast. It's, it's like a alter, alter, alter ego. Uh, well, it's in. Uh, no, I actually think you try, you try ruin my career. I think that's what you're talking about. 100%. That's I don't like have a career. I don't honest. have a career. <laughs> Joking to just come on here and ruin I don't have a career. career. <laughs> the gym owner's like, mate, you can't PT people out here anymore. <laughs> that's crazy. The see thing you were, I heavy opened my eyes that you were talking about um, there at the start about being a PT. 
and as you you do have a kind of like in a way you do need to kind of care for them in various 100%. ways not, not just about their like physical health like their mental health like why are you fat etc cetera, etc cetera, and all that like that's it's not even people like, that are always overweight just people in general so Aye. not everyone comes for weight losses obviously but then even someone that's coming that just wants to get to go to the gym three times a week and their life is fucking pandemonium mm. and like you get a lot of like guys that are say people that are earning a lot of money and they're doing 60 hour weeks Aye. and then you take them on and then they get annoyed that they're not making results even though they don't prioritize at all even that's stressful so then if you can imagine someone that's got loads of problems like loads of issues going on it's dead stressed out and it's dead pins all their problems on how they look then they expect me to fix that and then do you know what so i mean hard, so you need to make sure that someone is like realistic i even had a girl who's she's gonna train with me on tuesday next week like i'm gonna do a session mm-hmm. with her and hopefully take her on and she was like I'm 200 pounds and what I maybe not say the full details or whatever, but she was basically like, I want to lose 40 pounds in the next month. Month? Or like six weeks. Oh, Jesus. Six, Even at like that? Six weeks. And I was, as soon as I took her on, I was like, uh, just before we go on, just so you know, that's never going to happen. And mm. if you were to do that, you would only have, you could only do something absolutely psychotic that would probably put you in hospital. For six I was weeks like, I, I was, I was like, you can, that's not possible. So don't set yourself up to fail. I was like, you'll be in better position every single month. That's not going to happen. Yeah. And then she was like, that's fine. Like, see if she was like, no, nah, what will I lose that? I'd be like, okay, you go find someone else because I'm not going to work with you. Would you say then roughly 6 to 10 pounds a month? Or is that still too When you give them a weight loss goal? No, but I'm saying like, say, so Paddy Pimblett, who we were talking about there, has to make drastic weight cuts all the time. He that's different. Up to, like, to, that's what I'm saying, but he's only going to weigh that for like a certain amount right, of time. And he technically doesn't weigh that, it's water cuts. Oh, right. I mean, like, so he does, he didn't lose that amount of weight, he water cuts. Aye, aye. But I'm talking about like, so say this woman, she's wanting to sit at 160. Would you give a time frame of that or? No. No, no. Just let it gradually happen. If she's never been to the gym before, try to get her to go to the gym three times a week mm. first. I, I build her around the gym routine. Aye. That's first. Take you get consistency first. Get to the gym three times a week and then we'll build around that. I'll give you calorie goals and stuff, mm. but no, I never, I never ever give someone a weight loss goal like, right, we'll all lose eight pounds in a month. What's wrong when I'm losing six or seven? Uh, they've and made loads of progress we talk about the whole thing where you're like right so maybe say the scale weight's up this week but exactly. you look better it could be muscle well if she's got a muscle. holiday coming up exactly people, that, you know yeah. what I mean Does, uh, as long as you're making progress every month or even if you still one month but make progress mm-hmm. next month I just don't look at it like that that's the great thing about you know that Greg Doucette like he talks about like people focus too much on an, a physical scale and you should only be focusing on a physical scale if you're literally competing in a sport that you need to be a certain weight I think that's a good point I think that's a really good point, especially if she, that's why I wouldn't get her on the scale as well because she's now going to go to the gym with me and she's never been in the gym before. Mm. That's a completely different dynamic in terms of the scale. Hundred percent, mate. Not that like people think, oh, I'm putting on, I'm putting on weight, so I must be like losing fat and building muscle. Now you're probably eating more. Now you're going to the gym, but uh, you will be. <laughs> but at the same time, it doesn't matter on the scale as much. No, but people, it may, like you can't take on ten people that are going to wreck your head. You can't do it. Fuck no, mate. I done that at the start. I took on everyone. I had like ten people that were... You could do it at a, a suicide awareness group. <laughs> do, Paul, do you ever screen people But you? Because you're... I screen absolutely every single person I work with. And Paul's a therapist. Mm. So imagine... He's also a homosexual. <laughs> I'm bi. <laughs> Sorry, mate. He's bi. No, it's not relevant mate. to the mental health thing. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying, mate. You know what I mean? <laughs> anyway. So I've... I'm screening for things that I'm not qualified to mm, deal with. Exactly. And he's actually qualified to deal with mental health issues as he's a therapist. So I'm screening. I get people that come on with eating disorders that don't tell me they've got eating disorders. Then I find six weeks in and I'm stressed out of my mind because right. I've gave them calories. It's going to be, that's not how much, but it's happened maybe three or four times. And it's enough to like, I've now got on my form. Have you ever suffered from an eating disorder and stuff? Because you need to know that stuff. Right. Why does it stress you because if someone's had an eating disorder and you are putting them on less calories and promoting the same behavior that could have potentially led to the eating disorder. Right. Aye, d- definitely. But yeah. if, they're, if, they've, if they've got an eating disorder, maybe the less calories is more calories than what they're eating in the disorder. But to bring it back to what you're saying, right? Listen, I need to manage that shit like a f- meticulously, right? Because I hear mm-hmm. suicide stories and, mm-hmm. and I Sorry get that. that. And this is what, this is what that comes down to. Only they can help themselves. I'm I'm an expert in a process to help people, same as you. 
So it's like you can take the horse to water, but see if they don't drink it. That's on them. That's should, exactly the way I come about it. Right. Don't stress about people no adhering to programs. Yeah. Just be like, I've I've got a process that's mm, like that is that is the way I came about it, but I'm now two years in, so the first year I was obviously didn't grasp that as much. Yeah. Then especially the last six months I'm really like pretty strict on it. Especially if someone if I if I just know someone's not gonna do it as well, I don't take them on. Because you can get you, once you've had like 10 people that come on and don't do something you can kind of see some trends yeah and i like if i'm not the only person that can help them so if i'm wrong they'll find somebody else mm-hmm. see that thing you were talking about and um, with the guy who works six days and he's not seen progress people forget that stress is a huge factor in weight loss or oh, gym in general. like stress the amount of hormones that go through stress is fucking insane yeah it fucks your metabolism so much like a lot of these people just have horrendous lifestyles I and mean, that's the problem and they I, expect- can't, I can't fa- I, I'm try to explain it now as well I'm just sorting your training and nutrition that's yeah. it like I'll I'll, I'll be sort the- your steroids <laughs> <laughs> I'll be there for like support and stuff but yeah. I'm not like people have came in like I'm thinking about splitting up with my boyfriend I'm like mm-hmm. oh, he's, he's a prick no I'm kidding <laughs> but before <laughs> <beat> them, <laughs> before they maybe like listen to him being like oh this is what I think but now I'm just like Good. Do, do do what you think good right. to have a chat and that but I can't meet your life decisions yeah, good three sets of bench pressing right, Jesus Christ. see what happens bench your boyfriend I don't know so what what other was what other things were annoying you about the Paddy Bimlet stuff what that, do you mean what exactly do you mean by that as well is it specifically people you know aye like it and also you know there's thousands upon thousands of people that will do it it just sets that bad thing man look cause see it's somebody who's mentally ill and hearing them say that and then going and spotting that and it's like people who I know who you're maybe friendly with. Yeah. It can fuck your head even more, mate. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Because then you're like, hearing all this stuff. Is right. Like, Look, fuck that. Segue into this then. What yeah. do you think, Andrew Tate, if you if that's your opinions on the Paddy Bimlet stuff? What do I think, Andrew Tate? Paddy Bimblet. Paddy Bimblet. Paddy Bimblet, mate. Get it right. Right. <laughs> I'm raging now. Okay, so keep on right, to, uh, I watched a 20 minute video of exactly how Andrew Tate has got to where he is before I watched this. What? Just get it marking. See, look, this is what you do. There's a lot of men out there who think you're watching what you're saying because your co-host Ross likes me. No, no, because I ruined Ross for a time. Did you? Paul? Like I actually have called Andrew Tate. I says I know it's an act, but the stuff he says sometimes correct, right? Maybe twenty percent of it's accurate, and you kind of yeah. go right. I get give that. Him that. I'll give him a fifth right. of the stuff he says. Eighty percent is bullshit, and he knows it's bullshit because you literally see him break character and laugh mid things. Did you watch him on your mum's house? With Tom's good on that. Come on, like see the stuff we got. Oh, was he on? I, I never like, knew he was on that. Well, that's how Andrew Tate got big. Tom Segura and that. It's not just found that, these videos. No, he's, got, he's got bigger on other things. No, he has not. now, but they found him. They were the first that found him and made videos he about him. He blew up on Twitch, then, mate. First. Aye, Twitch, uh, TikTok, and all that now. The issue with Andrew Tate is there's so many as he classes and a lot of pe- people class is, um, let's be, is it Sigma? Is that the term? Let's be a Sigma oh, like male. S- Sigma and Beta and Alpha. You're Aye, about- like that shit, right? And th- there's so many Beta males out there who think, look, like, if I follow what Andrew Tate says, I can get those hundreds of miles. I can get those girls. But you're not because Andrew Tate is about a six foot five black fucking Adonis world champion kickboxer, multi-millionaire. Like you won't get that lifestyle, but you won't. It's not attainable. So and we were talking about this half mic one day. It's like he's at the top of the pyramid, and you're under that, and yep. you, you won't ever get there. You'll never get there. And it, it's like, see, I don't like the term toxic masculinity. Right? I don't because I hear it so often in comedy, and it pisses me I off. I don't even. It's toxic masculinity is the same as like <laughs> feminism. Now it's branched off so much that so it doesn't even mean what it originally meant. But the definition of feminism, and this is, <laughs> this do you is know what I mean? No, feminism ah. is a great cause, but now you've got like ah, extremist femi- feminists, fe- feminazis. That's what it becomes. Yeah, that's what. So I feel like toxic ma- masculinity's done the same thing. It's done, yeah, exactly the same. Like they've picked a a minority of men who are toxic, like being toxic ma- yeah. men, right? And they've branched it onto a guy who will say one word. Like, and they'll go, that's toxic masculinity. Mm. Do you know what I mean? That's what happens. And it's the same way, feminism and, like, comedy. Look, man, I fucking, I want equal rights completely, man, between women and men in comedy in all circumstances, right? But it's when they when they do this thing of belittling men on stage, it's like, that's not feminism. Yeah. Because feminism is equal rights between us, like, men and women. But then, and also, man, like, a guy was doing this thing last, last night, and he was, like, fucking... 
mate, it was basically just being racist towards white people, and he came out with this thing. Is like, this a comedian? Aye. On stage? On stage, and he's right. saying this thing, and he's like, you can't be racist towards white people. And I'm like, are you kidding me? That's the whole point. We are a white race. There's a black race. There's this race. Yeah. Like, they can still be racist. That's the whole point. But he's a white gay guy and he's talking about this. And I'm like... White gay men can get away with anything. Aye, that's why I'm gay. <laughs> so I'm coming out and I'm it's gay. It's like Tim Dillon can say... Tim Dillon can get away with anything. And he anything. plays it and he even... See the way he goes about it, but he also lets you know that I am a gay man and that's why I'm saying this and that's why I'm allowed to do it. Yeah. And he understands the hypocrisy. But he gets away with everything. Aye, mate. That's why I'm coming to his game. Just get there. <laughs> Sorry just on my next stand up. Sorry Every time you go out, I'm gay. <laughs> I'm just to let you know. Just to let you know. I'm gay. See, when I did the cross trainer joke at Club 100, uh, there's this comedian who I've gagged a few times. She's gay, right? And obviously, no, not the cross trainer one. That one's hilarious, by the way. Love that joke. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I obviously say, like, I came out to my parents, not as homosexual because I'd be gay. Obviously, she's sitting there with her partner and they're gay as fuck. So I just addressed it and like, just to clarify, I'm actually pals with a gay person, so I'm not actually homophobic. So who wins this one? <laughs> To, to a crowd in Motherwell. <laughs> <laughs> and they were just like, they just looked at me and went, I don't know, man, move on. I went, sound. I can start every sentence the same. My mum's gay. Here's here's why. There we go. Exactly. It's actually a good scapegoat, isn't it? Ah, mate, 100%. Just get yourself out of stuff. Motherwell can go fuck itself. How? It is the worst place ever to gig. It's the worst place ever. I in period. <laughs> we get this complete shithole. But Pretty much North Lancashire is. Aye. I will see when I'm a multi millionaire. I will blow up Motherwell <laughs> Stadium. Motherwell's in the stadium. Just blow up the stadium. <laughs> Nothing to do with Motherwell, just the stadium. And cause I, what I, happened? Right, I performed twice in Club 100, right? Uh, the first time was... What is Club 100? That's... It's like a wee social club just outside Motherwell Stadium. It's right, where okay. you, all the fans and that go kind of okay. prior to the game or after the game. Uh, but they have like loads of kind of function rooms. So like there was ISIS doing beheadings in one room and then there was us doing... <laughs> <laughs> and those two stand up the other equally both people are getting beheaded um, but as I'm so we're obviously doing this but I don't know how it fucking runs man but I walk in and mate it's just full of fucking old people and I'm like oh class man this oh, is gonna this no. is gonna go down a fucking wait treat. but they, do they sell tickets that, so as they promote it, it and it's older people that buy it well, I, I don't know, mate, but just to that gig there was, but it's Or is it the people that actually go to that place a lot that go? No, no, because you had to, it was separate. It was how separate, do, how so, do That's lo- what I'm saying, it's like separate I don't understand rooms. how they end up there, though. I don't know, mate. I don't I honestly, get it. You just put it on. What do you mean how old people get to Club 100? No. Put <laughs> some taxi in this thing. <laughs> obviously. <laughs> no, but basically this guy put on a night in Club 100, there's separate function rooms. ISIS aren't actually there. Uh, I wish they were at that point. And, um, <laughs> mate, it'd have been better. Their bombs would have been better than mine, honestly. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> they, genuinely, they genuinely would have, man. <laughs> but, um, mate, it was just a pure fucked gig, man. Uh, I fucking, I get into the room, man. <laughs> <laughs> they would have, honestly, I'd have preferred it. Uh, but, That's hilarious, mate. I got into the fucking... I'm just in the venue, mate, and I'm just looking, and I'm like, it's surrounded the Walking Dead in here. Like, so many old mm. people. But I thought that last time when I did Atlantis, but I actually killed in Atlantis to a group of old people. You know the religious joke I did, right? I can't remember. I said to him, I went, isn't there a fan of religion in here? And, mate, the cunt's like, that. yes, I am, so watch what you say. <laughs> and I'm like, that. I just turned around and went, well, you're in for a fucking treat, mate. <laughs> <laughs> and then I obviously tell the joke. Uh, do you want me to just say it for your audience? Just say it, yeah. Fuck it. Right. Uh, I actually come to a religious background, but I'm not particularly religious myself. I think that when we started out religion was when I started to read the rules in religion and how they contradict one another. For instance, the rule... <laughs> Can I get it out, man? For instance, the rule, no sex before marriage. That's never made any sense to me because if you've been a member of that church since you were a wee boy, odds are you've been fucked by the priest that's marrying you. <laughs> and as I've said it, man, like... Just an old cunt's just shouting at me, going, that's not right. That's not fucking right. And I'm like, correct, mate. They shouldn't be fucking kids. It's not right at all. It's just not right. And I just bombed so bad, mate. But you bombed it. This was, was this the... Aye. I thought you said you killed it all the last time. I killed Atlantis. Oh, right. that's what about... But Club 100, like, that's where so I just... So just shouting at you. That's just not shouting, right. Mate. And a South African guy went on, right? It wasn't black. Surprise. A white South African. Uh, so German... Basically, mate, <laughs> German he was a Nazi. He was a huge Nazi, right? 
Uh, only South Africa. Do you know what I've actually recently only learned that about the South Africa is basically predominantly white people? Is that me being racist, thinking no. part of Africa is black? But no, I thought it was black because people. of mass genocide. Right, there we go. That's also why I got banned for Instagram. Why? Because I said, I think... Oh, you banned? Well, I got banned for that week. I said, um, we, we got a question from a fan, and he says, what race should next be genocided? And I said, I think the white people were due it. We are due it. We're due a genocide. <laughs> 100%. Every other race has went through it except w us. Western white people. Exactly. A mass genocide. Yeah. Everyone with blue hair should be slaughtered. Europeans. Aye. Oh, yeah, right. I sit in that club 100. I don't even know where I'm going with this story. It's just shit, mate. I'm going to blow the place up. <laughs> I hate it. Mate, I hate it. I, I told the guy, I said to him, do not ever ask me to come here again. It's nothing to do with, like, I want to go there, go there and redeem it. Yeah. and be better and yeah, smash the Yeah, but if gig. the club's terrible and the, the audience aren't going to receive it, what's thanks. the point? This is what I said and they went, mate, just give it another try. I've given it two tries, mate. I mean, it's fucking shit. Hey, maybe the benchmark in this place is, is that you bomb. Aye. It's like, oh, I'm doing right, I'm doing well. But, but you'll definitely is, get places like that where it's like impossible to make a good joke. Did the South African guy do well? No, I, that's what I was going to say. That's it. Mate, he... That's joke. It was kind of shit, right? But he had this whole thing where he couldn't understand the Scottish accent, but he knew what bog roll meant, right? No. He knew what pot noodle meant. And a guy asked him, he went, do you know where the bog roll is? And he goes, and I ended up bringing him a pot noodle. And this fucking guy for the back goes like that. That's because you don't know your fucking language. And just like pointing him like that. <laughs> I'm like, that. right, who invited Hitler? Mother will is just full of everything. xenophobic. See you on pot noodles. Well, <laughs> uh, no. that's what you took away from that joke, that racism. Darren, Darren Connell showed me a TikTok of a guy being like, if you struggle to get your protein in, and it was a video of him putting macro into a cheese and mushroom pot noodle. Oh my God, let's spew, mate. That is fucking disgusting. Some, but was he being serious? It was like a fitness TikTok. Some of this stuff, fitness people Should are putting up. Should he be beheaded by ISIS for saying that? <laughs> <laughs> Should he? Wait, uh, like some of the recipes that fucking personal trainer store it's actually... weird like Mitch spunked in his tacos the other day and said <laughs> there's more protein and I was like Mitch man come on I was like maybe yours has got 6 grams but mine's got 2 wait I've tried <laughs> some of Michael's recipes some of them are fucking disgusting are they? I, like actually chronic are we just gonna, we're going to out them spends like 4 hours doing them <laughs> do you know the ones that I hate the most the ones that try and turn protein powder into some sort of like mousse and oh, try so to much. claim that so it's like, so it's like a dessert. Like Aye. you're try this amazing oh, I've dessert. Seen somebody putting egg whites in with protein powder, oh, mate, and that man. just made me want a bulk. Aye, that's that disgusting, is, mate. That is that's disgusting. That's just trying. Like, don't. Could you not just need have, be that much protein in something? Like, could you not just have like a bit of caramel shortcake, say half a caramel shortcake, and a protein shake at the same time? It'd be the exact same calories. Just what? Get a, a grenade protein. bar. Right. Like they things need, from the ISIS. You don't need from me. A, get a grenade your own, bar from ISIS. Your own thing. You uh, <laughs> I got that joke. <laughs> I never heard. <laughs> what you I said get a grenade bar from ISIS. Mate, <laughs> 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 if that isn't the opening line of this podcast, I'm going to be fuming. <laughs> <laughs> how many ISIS jokes and how many retard jokes? <laughs> Mate, I've got so much in this new act that's coming up for my show. Have you got a new bit? That Aye, is coming cool. up. Just look, plug your show. Well, and, many and the, Motherwell Civic Centre and Motherwell Club 100 <laughs> come see me behead the full Motherwell team <laughs> <laughs> no um, so the fringe is going on and I hate Edinburgh right oh I despise Edinburgh if if ISIS should go anywhere be Edinburgh right <laughs> <laughs> that's the last ISIS joke by Jesus <laughs> Christ man I'm beginning to turn now <laughs> no but basically the fringe is going on and I just kind of thought well me and a comedian called Ross Daly we we done a few gigs together. We we got him like, fuck. He does a pie and bean show in here. Correct, Paul? Every three months. Every three months he does one. <laughs> He's actually very consistent. Uh, no, but, um, <laughs> and we just got talking in that. And we were like, see the way Ireland is doing it. Like you're saying, Todd, and stuff. Like, I took this is of, what I've banged on. No, no, that's what I'm saying. I, I took like, a wee bit of thing for you. And we were thinking, we should put on a show during the fringe for the people that can't go to the fringe. Like, or just can't be fucked going into Edinburgh, mate. And we'll have it in town, uh, the Vibram, at a venue that I fucking absolutely love. It's a great, great night for comedians. It's a, like, like I was talking about, it's a comedian, comedian's room. It just mm -hmm. is. It's fucking insane. And so we're basically putting on this night and it's going to be called The Good and Evil, right? Obviously, I'm the good. <laughs> Obviously, right? Trans Do you know what was great with your last 
show in the stand Aye. when you finished and you obviously made about four horrendous jokes like as in like the, what the ones that the blue hair warriors would fucking start crying over anyway you came <laughs> off and billy Kirkwood came on and went sean is available for birthday parties he did, <laughs> that, that, it, mate, he did that the first gig we done <laughs> and i went i just read him mate. that's fucking hilarious you should do it every time we do a show together and then he's doing it for now on that's funny man Aye, um but, you're, you're the bad no but obviously mate but we're going to pitch it as all well, like so the poster uh it's not been done yet but the poster is going to be like me as an angel and ross as a devil and then cunts are going to obviously turn up and go oh obviously sean's material must be like pure dead pc and dead yeah. this and all that right and then i just go on and start talking about isis how are you gonna <laughs> <laughs> start quoting yourself on the podcast <laughs> I, I just go up and read the full quran <laughs> <laughs> when is that well it was meant plug to be it, plug this properly it was, meant to be, right, it was meant to be during the fringe so everything i just said there is not happening right? it's not during <laughs> the fringe this has <laughs> lasted so long no but it's meant to be during the fringe but um all my mates are fighting on the 27th of august at hollytown havoc right so I'm uh, I can't not oh, go. Oh, you don't have a Kazarian thing. <laughs> Why are you laughing me? I'll cut your cut in. <laughs> but it's like a show um, done by Bungard, and it's for like all their fighters at the gym, basically. Because during COVID, they couldn't get fights. So he put on an actual event. So when is your fight. fucking show, Sean? I don't even know. <laughs> right? No, but it'll be... Um, What's the week after? <laughs> Holy fuck. Like September? First week in September? No, so? second week in September it'll be. Right, right. And what we're, gracious. what we're planning on doing, right? This is the actual whole th whole thing with the room. I don't care about what people say, and neither does Ross, right? I don't care if you're a woke comedian or you're like me and you say mental shit, right? So what we wanted to actually do for the room was like, if you're woke as fuck or you're as dark as fuck, we can all come together and create a good environment for comedy. So we wanted to create that room, and we want to try, we want to try that night out. Right, so Ross, Ross isn't this woke comedian, right? But he is, he is to an extent, like quite PC, isn't he? Like you know, Ross Paul yourself. I've never seen him do stand up. Right, but he's not fucking like he's even told me himself like <laughs> this is how bad people think my stuff is. They will tell me horrendous jokes and go, but I would do it. You should do it. <laughs> and I go, do you am this bad fucking racist mental bastard? And I'm like, aye. Hey, hey. So that's basically the whole thing. Like, I don't want to separate comedy or comedians. Yeah. I want to educate comedians like myself and Ross, and Ross has educated me, and I've educated him, and so that's basically what the room is. What well, the night is? It's going to be a mix of comedy where you're going to get like your. Ke this is the way I describe it. I say it's like Ross is like your Kevin Bridges, and I'm your Frankie Boyle, yeah. right? That's and it's colliding the two things together, and I feel as though that's the way comedy should go. We should all be together in this. We don't need separation. There doesn't have to be a political aspect of this is the left and this is the right in comedy. It can just be in the middle where we're all funny and, and we enjoy each other. See, Frankie Boyle's humour, his wasn't actually to try to say the most outrageous shit though. No. I know it, it was really bad, but like what Dave Chappelle and Ricky Gervais do is literally just try to say something that's going to get their, their film that's the up. huge difference right. Frankie Boy would I think Frankie Boy would just literally say what he found funny and sometimes it was my, mental. Yeah. I don't think he came out and was like how can I like piss everyone off? He just, don't get me wrong when he did this the, electrics joke was quite bad right no but it was funny i loved it um, <laughs> but that's the thing no but that's there's a humor behind that yeah, do you know what i mean there's a punchline the to be good Ricky Gervais, Ricky Gervais has no punchline to these things and they, his whole punchline is going but i'm joking i'm joking that yeah. was a joke that, and dave Chappelle literally just like is like transsexuals and then looks at people and like what you never said like a bunch funny. of people laughing going Haha, i think that tea I mean, it's like it's just people agree with me. It's not actually you telling a joke and something like that. Yeah, there's no funny. punchline. I don't right. I think Dave Chappelle's stand up's the worst I've ever seen. Like I, I know comedians like you go, oh, but there's comp like there's good stuff that I can appreciate as a comedian, but I didn't laugh at it once. And that's fine, mate. You should kill yourself for that. <laughs> no, I mean, like, Do you think he's funny? I don't find Americans that funny. There's two particular. Right, and cunts are going to have fun out here. Right? Tim Dillon's hilarious. Right. Joe but Rogan I, is pish. Right, I want to talk about the big. Like D Tim Dillon's, he is big, and he's on the way up to where uh, Kevin Hart or somebody would be. Right. right. But if you're wanting to talk about the ones that are kind of end of their career esque, yeah. right. So you're going to talk about what Kevin Hart, Dave Chappelle, Ricky Gervais. 
They are on their way out. They are. Bill like, Barr. Bill Barr. They, He's funny. Bert Chrysler. Tom Scurry. Like, they're all kind of... That's Bert it. Awful. And they've got like five or six specials. Bert's specials. the one that drinks all the time. They all Aye. talk. He's but Bert had like... You can't say the Russian train joke. That's like one of the best bits of stand-up ever. But if I just... The machine joke, isn't it? I don't know what that joke is, but... I made a movie about that joke. That Mm. that joke, it is, that'll go down as one of the greatest bits ever in stand-up. Bill Chrysler's one of the guys that, and I I work with a lot of comedians in Glasgow. Mainly me. Podcasts and stuff, well, a few. Some people are funny. Yeah. And some people are good comedians. Some people are both. Uh Bill Chrysler's funny, but he's not a great comedian. Tom Segura's... Not particularly funny, but he's a great comedian. Outstanding. You know what I mean? They're different things. Some mm. people are like, but you get people that are both. Mm. I worked at their craft and hilariously funny in person. Have you ever heard Dave Chappelle talk about the black community or black people in general? No. Right. He is phenomenal at it. And do you know why? Because he's done the research and he's experienced it. But then when he comes on to doing trans jokes it's because he's not educated himself enough on it that's why that's just why i say and i get like what's the kind of commenting on it and saying like uh, the whole joke is like within the joke how do you not understand it and i'm like i do understand it mate i overanalyze every fucking single piece of material ever Hmm. but because i'm so obsessed with comedy but at the end of the day dave Chappelle and ricky gervais even know their self it's fucking lazy it's lazy writing you can make a fucking trans joke and it can be amazing but you're just saying you're just saying the most outrageous shit for the sake of it. Like I know I say something. I think it's mate. just it's just marketing. It's the same as I do. It? It's you know if I go up there and go uh, uh, like that, that whole scandal made Dave spill more money. Aye, it didn't well, lo- it didn't lose him anything. He's not got sponsors that pulled out. He doesn't has he? care anymore because he's so established. Yeah. That that's the issue that he we, just wants more people to see. It, more people talk about it. Mate, the wreckage of his joke where he goes, uh, uh, remember the old fashioned women? You know the ones that don't have the penises. <laughs> but right, where are we going for this bit? Oh, yeah. Where are we going? And that's that's it. That's the whole premises. And then after it, it talks about, um, or they shouldn't be allowed to use the same toilets or something like that. And then it basically revolves that whole around them not using the toilets to, um, you're a bigot for not saying that. And then he says, oh, he raped me. And then he goes, "Uh, eh, you're a bigot. She raped me. And it's like, I think, where where is this? Where's the joke going? I used to always say from the ages of like 16 and stuff, I hadn't watched any Ricky Gervais's like shows mm-hmm. i'd only seen him doing stand-up and talking about how much and now so when i was 16 i'd be a strong atheist like i was like and anyone talked about god which <laughs> but i actually hated like i actually hated him because he took it too far and he's always been doing that he's always just trying to get his like opinion out and then like try cause controversy with that which which is annoying because then i got to know his shows and then i started to love him because yeah, he created writer. the office because he even his others like afterlife is one of my favorite things ever. Best things ever i love him in it but i hate his stand-up so much right. That's i hate it so ricky much gervais, like, I, we were talking about this with paul i said ricky gervais is probably the greatest ever comedy writer like for tv i think so films, yeah. right because the great thing about Ricky Gervais is within a TV series or a film, you feel every single emotion. It's a roller emotion. coaster. All right, so roller coaster are emotions. But see, when it comes to stand up, it's as if he forgets. He could bring that to stand up. Like, I do believe, well, I don't actually because I hate that whole thing with stand up where they go, there has to be a hidden message within every joke. There has to be, like, nah, fuck off. Not, it just has I, to be funny. It's just, that's it. Hey, there doesn't need to be any life advice. Do, nah. you know, do you know who I watched, though? Daniel Sloss's thing last night, the jigsaw thing. Have you ever seen that? Uh, is that the one where he gets them to... Is that the one about his sister or is that the one about... Um, Relationship. Aye. It's amazing. Aye. It's one of the best things I've ever watched. Because it's a... But the great thing about Daniel Sloss is, is like... Did you if see anyone, 137 If anyone divorces? has never watched this, it's basically a guy... He's from... He sounds like he's from somewhere east. Edinburgh. It's Edinburgh. Aye. Edinburgh, is it? Um, and he does... Uh, stand-up routine called jigsaw and then like the start of it's like a lot more actual stand-up and then 25 minutes in he just basically goes on this rampage about relationships and how they're a farce ironically he's in one now i am bad at the time he was like 26 and he was just talking about how everyone builds this whole romantic idea and then it fucks you over and stuff and it's fucking amazing and he's so passionate about it and he slips the odd joke in and it's un- it's so good all right well it's and- settlement and it that's what he that, yeah, that's what he basically rounds it up to use all settle and rather than do what you want for when himself. he was doing the live show he was like I, I think so he'd been touring and he'd broke up 72 people at that point and now it's on to like 
tens of thousands. I mean, it's so many now. But if you watch that and you're in a relationship that you hate, then right, you're... I'm going to watch a bit of Missy's. <laughs> and just say, I'm not hinting. I'm not hinting at all. <laughs> it's so good, though. The one bit is he's like, there's bits that he's like, you build the sides in, so one's your relationships, one's your... And you're trying to get in the middle, and that's probably going to be the partner that you're with. Mm-hmm. And he's like, but then I started building mine, and I've got my relationships, my my friends or whatever, my work. And then I was like, there's a fucking cunt in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. Mate, he's hey, just, I never realised how good how good a stand up he is. I was see the thing is he's he's what Kevin Bridges and that can't do. He broke America. He broke globally. Yeah. Because I didn't he, realise he was that big. Oh mate, like he sells it the fucking what is it, the Melbourne thing and what's the I live in Melbourne, I don't know what, what you're talking about. The, the dome thing or whatever it is, the big fucking twenty five thousand seat or something. He sold that out and all that. The guy's fucking huge. How do I not know what that is? I lived there for What did years. they fucking call that thing? Is it the, the, Sydney, the Sydney Opera House you talk about? Is that what it is? Ah, that no wonder you get the wrong side. the fuck is Melbourne? No, there's a bad Melbourne Dome is on that. Right, that's all. Fuck those, man. I'm tripping, no boss. Idea. But I sold it like arenas everywhere, man. He's. I'd love to go see him. He's class. Ah, he's right. playing at the French. He's got I think he always plays the French. Ah, I am not going. Yeah. <laughs> I hate Edinburgh, mate. I'm just going to say I hate it. I don't hate Edinburgh. I hate the people that live in Edinburgh. Oh, that's why I hate it. She's not that every time I go, somebody's a prick to me. Every single time. I remember, I think the last time I went, somebody was walking down the street, right, and they had, like, my coffee cup, and they weren't looking where they were going. Walked into me, spilt all their coffee down my white top, and then called call me a cunt. They fed you up and I was like, that is Edinburgh, summed up. Should have bought my new coffee. You are in the wrong. Wanker. And then when I, whenever you meet someone that's not from Scotland, they're like, I'm going to Scotland, I'm going to Edinburgh. Mm. And like, it's not the same thing. So it's like, actually I, not the same thing, I don't think. Well, Edinburgh. Glasgow. Edinburgh shouldn't be. Oh, well, obviously it is part of Scotland, it's but it's just a tourist spot, it? It's just a tourist spot, though. Oh, it's culture vultures. That's what it's for. What do you mean, as in the tourist vultures, you mean? Aye, that's all it is, mate. It's just but bigging up kilts, bigging up castles. Aye. If you meet anybody from Scotland, they don't wear kilts, I promise. Hmm. Remember one time, see in Australia, mate, they... Aussies would try when you served them they'd ask you where they were from first of all they wouldn't know if you were Scottish or Irish mm. then whenever they figured out they would try out Scottish you because they'd say they've got Scot- Aussies are like Americans that way they do, they cannot say they're Australian they have to say where four generations before is where they're from <laughs> and from Scotland yeah. and then we, I remember meeting this guy and he was like whereabouts in Scotland are you from and he like, didn't believe me he was like no you sound Irish and I was like I'm from Glasgow and he's like well, whereabouts and I was like have you been to Scotland and he's Aye. like He's like, I went on holiday. I'm a bum born and bred in Scotland. He's like, um, my family's like born and bred Scotland. He's like, I don't believe you're Scottish. And I was like, I'm from Uddingston, where, tu- <laughs> where, where Tunnock's tea cakes are made, mate. <laughs> <laughs> How much Scottish can I be? What do you want me to do? <laughs> and then he was like, well, he was like, well, what's your clan name? <laughs> I was like, this isn't fucking Call of Duty. <laughs> 2018. <laughs> what do you think we do? Where's your clan? Check out fucking King Edward. You should have went K K K. Check out should have said my fucking King Edward. We did beat England. <laughs> we did. <laughs> what about in a kilt or a fucking shield? That's what they're like, though. Oh, man. Mate, it's the same as where you live. It's the same, except you have the sun. You uh, don't. I had it's that, not any different. <laughs> mate, I had this bit in my stand up. I no longer do it, right? Because I low key. Oh, but now you just put on this. I low key <laughs> think it's kind of. It's not racist, right? It's a whole play on race, right? So. <laughs> There's a joke within the joke. Wait till you hear it, right? I'll, I will reveal the shit out of this, and you can edit it out if you feel it's too mental, right? Paul, just stop recording. <laughs> <laughs> no, Paul, don't make this is amazing. This is like one of the best bits. But um, the last trip I went to was a trip to Canada. And Canada's fucking great. I remember when we arrived at the reception. And obviously the stereotypical question is, well, where are you guys from? And we obviously reply, you're from Scotland. Her response was an attempt of the Scottish accent. <laughs> oh, you guys are from Scotland. Right? And that's got me thinking, do they do this with everyone that comes in here? You guys are from Afghanistan. <laughs> 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 right? It's obviously a play... On this bitch is extremely racist. Yeah. I think it's fine. Do you think that's fine? I uh, don't know if you get away I'm with I'm not that. the one who <laughs> said it. It was a fucking Canadian bitch. I don't know if you get away with it. Oh, you can't get away with that. I think it's low-key kind of racist, isn't it? Well, it's, basically, like, no, it's you... racist on her fact that she assumed everybody from Scotland talks like that and everybody from Afghanistan's a terrorist. 
I was in Vegas. <clears throat> I was at Hard Rock seeing Santana. And a guy was like, oh, are you for Scotland? I'm not even got an American accent. <laughs> I try, mate. It's terrible, though. Nah, yeah, I was waiting terrible, in the yeah. queue for like, a beer at the, at the bar, and he's like, and I was speaking to my missus at the time, and he was like, "Are you from Scotland?" And I was like, "Aye." And he was like, "Say something for me." I went, "Fuck off." <laughs> 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 Fucking prick. Oh. Do you know the worst one they do? Australians and Americans. You say I'm from Scotland. And they're like, "I'm going to Dublin next year, man." Like, Glasgow, because it's just not in Scotland. Fuck off. <laughs> I, mean, I think the worst one that there's a sea in between. They're two <laughs> different <laughs> islands. So far, the apart. worst thing that they could ever do, and I've seen this happen when I was in Canada at Uncles and I was a wee boys. They go, my like my dad was like meeting some cunt, mm. my random guy, and he was like, "My family's from Motherwell. Do you know such and such?" And my dad for like four hours was like. Aye. Aye, bro. Man, oh, Jim, aye, Jim, Jimmy. Aye. 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 We oh, go way fuck. back to Club 100. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the worst one that they do, that they, they assume that we're in a fucking village or something. Aye, mate. They might, well, America's so to, big, man. Maybe they think like, we're just so tiny that we're all fucking... To be fair, I, I worked in a coffee shop in Melbourne and I worked with this Australian and she was like, where are you from? And I said, Glasgow. And she was like, do you know? And I was like, there's a million people who live in Glasgow. I'm not going to know who you're talking about. <laughs> no. And then she went... Connor Cartwright and I was like, "Fuck off!" <laughs> you knew him? No I way. Said, Connor Cartwright showed me what Tinder was. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. <laughs> so oh, he was people. like, "We we used to hang about with we sister, and she used to have empties all the time, so we used to stay over." Did you leave her him. empty? Or <laughs> That is the question. That is the that's what the people want to know, <laughs> Gavin. That was the last time I said that we don't know, all know each other because we do. Yeah, we do, man. We absolutely do. I got a question for you. What Go did you it. think of my performance at the stand? Good. It's good. It's all thanks, no, babe. but it's gonna get. It's gonna be like refined. Do you know what I mean? Oh, you can yeah. tell that you've only done it a few times. So like the jokes were good, but you obviously need like not look at the notepad and all that, don't you? Well, no, because it's a work in progress. So that's what that show was, right? So but that, like, as in when you're gonna do the show, you obviously. Want I mean, I'm doing. See, when I do the one way, could you? Do, oh, I think the sh I think it's good what your mate said about introducing yourself because i know you as well mm. so obviously it's easy for me to find the jokes funny because i know yeah, 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 who yeah. you are and what you're going to do um so i think that when you introduce that in it as well and people know what they're getting into at the start as well and then you'll just be better at it you can tell that, that you haven't done it that much mm -hmm. but the actual jokes are good which is uh, the important part isn't it that's what uh, paul and i tell me as well and even billy says like the jokes are there it's about the the stage thing that's what it's I the same it's as the every thing. other single thing yeah like just doing it all uh, right like same even like, I've even got better, so much better for just gigging regular yeah. fuck now. Just being able to not, like not have to think about what you're saying. Right. It's like going into autopilot mode so you can then look at the audience and mm. see if there's something else. Like you don't have to think about the joke in your head and you can maybe look and scan and see you can maybe get a vibe if that joke's the next joke's gonna do shit because you've already got a vibe of the room. Just anyway. <laughs> I honestly just but you know what I mean? Ah, but you're no, still okay. at that stage. Yeah. No, the only reason I took up the notebook uh, was because Billy said Bear in mind, this is a work in progress show. So if you've got any new material, just kind of try it out here if you want. So I took up the notebook just to basically go back and check, right, do I want to go for this bit or change it into this bit? But the notebook wasn't just blank. <laughs> so so it was like how, a many, how many? I must have had about 30, 40 bits in that notepad. To about how many shows you've done since then? Well, maybe about six. I think... I think That's doubled, is... basically, what I'd fucking already done. I think Glasgow comedy scene is... Like, it should be way better. It should be miles better. I know you're going to be like, there's loads of good comedians, but just when I see all the other bits... No, 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 it should. I it should I be exactly way better. Because like, there's be so many funny people from here, and just, I'm saying this because I love comedy, and I don't know any Glasgow comedians, but terrible. I know... I know That's Norv terrible. I know Northern Irish ones, and I know, like, a lot of the Northern English ones, because, like, the Liverpool scene looks quite good as well now, yeah, yeah. with that Have A Word podcast and stuff. Mate. So, like, why... That should be here, because there's enough funny people here for it to be the, like that. The issue is is we are still all pretending we're these woke people mm. and we're not doing like what I hope to that, do. Those show. have a word, they have a word, think podcast, they say whatever the fuck One of the want, big eh? problems that we've got, I think, is that BBC Scotland exists. There right? we go. So like comedians. They're still get, trying to get on the We've got a BBC yeah. building down at the Clyde, so they're all just looking at that, thinking, oh, I could get there, so I need to watch what I'm saying. And they don't just 100%. let themselves fucking go. Fuck all of that. Go your own route. Mate. Fuck all of that. I keep 
I keep telling every comedian, I was like, there's, they will there's fuck no you over. Now, mate. Every single time I've done something to do with any media, they've fucked me over. Like when I used to do freestyle and I'd done like maybe stuff for STV and all that, they always make you out. They all they always make you look like a prick. Like they've got <laughs> mate. they've got some sort of story behind all it. And then Gavin was once raped when he was a child. <laughs> now he freestyles other men's balls. <laughs> 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 Sorry, a freestyle's a different kind of balls. That's what I meant. Bastard. But oh well, we get the joke. You gotta laugh, mate. Yeah. That's the main thing. I definitely need to go their own route. Start, like, do it. Mate, Gary Foles done it. Gary Foles done it. He's already set the fucking, the path. Gary Miko's done it. They've already, but they guaranteed Gary Miko works with the BBC. So you kind of go, right, Gary, we know what's going on here. Mm. Right. <laughs> but they, no, a bit like, that's not, that's not a bad thing. Like there's Gary Miko, so mate. there's loads of people who's like that. I'm just surprised that there's not, like, everyone, con like, coming together. Like, that Mark Jenko's quite big now as well, isn't he? Right, funny story about Mark Jenko. I mailed him near the start of the podcast, and he <laughs> replied to me by saying, nah, I'm good, man, I'm just kind of doing my own thing. Right, so that sums up Glasgow, doesn't it? Right, and I went, what do you mean you're doing your own thing? And he just went, just like, I'm just kind of doing my own thing, mate, like, I'm all good. And I went, right, that's cool, mate. And... Basically, the way he said it was as if, when you're bigger, I will come on. Well, you asked him to come on. I know, but guess. No, that's not at the same it. time, he should have just ignored you and then waited till you've got more. Because I, I would right, do like, that. Gary, Gary I asked to go on podcasts and like, fuck Gary Falls, like, I mailed Gary Falls years ago. Well, not years ago, like a year ago. Right? And I tell him all the time, I says, they don't need to reply. They, they, I don't owe them anything. They don't owe me anything. Just ignore it, though. Just no, ignore, ignore it. Aye, but Gary did. Gary Foles did ignore it, but then Gary heard nice things about me. He's seen the effort that I've been putting in with the podcast, and now Gary's coming on. Like, I don't mind that, but it's when you, you're applying such an arrogant, cunty way. Yeah. It's like, when I see but you... But then again, this is where I need to catch you out, because you do this sometimes. You calling him in a cunty way is just completely... Would completely stop you ever doing anything with him. That's fine. It. But the thing he might have changed from then. Do you know what I mean? No, but so that's where you all need. No, I definitely not do like, stuff if, for that. Do you get but, what I mean? No, but let me. I promote their podcast. They've got a podcast called Some Laugh. But then you say Cun Laugh Cunny Way, and that as soon as if he was to hear that straight away, that's fine, mate. He can come and have a discussion with me about it. <laughs> no, but he don't start discussions like that. Well, well, he doesn't start discussions by going. Like, I'm doing. I know, but thing. you know what I mean. You need uh, to be better than that. No, but I'm. This is what I'm saying. Well, I may have, Do you see my point, Paul? But let me get my point here. What I'm saying is the first interaction I had him, he was quite a cunt, but that didn't stop me from promoting Scottish comedy podcasts or comedy in general. I've shared his stuff, shared his podcast. Like, I still love what he's doing and I still will share his stuff, regardless if I think what we had initially, he was a bit of a cunt. And he was. Mm -hmm. That's fine. But he might be sound now and that's fine. Cool. Fair. Fair game. Because I don't give a fuck. See, we don't get along. If I see you're killing it... Because if it, if it always shit, goes like that, like, I'll always be the same. Like, I'll never Mate, do, it, do you know what I mean? And this is the issue. See, what you're talking about with Northern Ireland and Liverpool, they all get along with each other. Like, no, they're just, not just the comedians. All the people want to see their own people succeed. Look at Paddy Pimblet. What's his name? Paddy Pimblet. It, it, literally, mate... But Glasgow's See, like that as well. If, it's if not, like. mate. It's not. It no. is. No, it's not. It's not at all, mate. mate. Every country to get each other. They are, mate. And maybe in comedy, but in general, no, it's in not. in general, they are, mate. Nah, music I wouldn't. Scene, music scene's music exactly scene, same. Everybody's got a dagger out. All the PTs are the same. They've all mm. got their daggers out for each other, mate. You it's know that. All the, all the wee but I don't think that's a Glasgow thing. That's a UK-wide thing. No, it's not UK-wide. Scousers all love each other. The Irish, Irish boys all love each other. They might not love each other. But they support it and they'll appreciate what they're doing. They'll date each other's shit. And they'll go and they'll support each other. They might not love each other. They might we be definitely like, love our own. Bit, but are you are you mad? We look at, we, look love, at, we look love when we love when they're successful. We love that's it. We don't love the journey. We just don't. Look at mm. Josh Taylor. He didn't really give a fuck until he won belts. I don't know. I I think from going away and coming back, but everyone says the same thing about the, where they're from. But look at Paul Craig as well. He gets nowhere near as much love as he should. Mate, the guy's top 10 in the UFC in one of the heaviest divisions. The mm. guy should be a fucking hero in here. I don't think I really agree about, hey. about that statement. Because I, oh. I think... That's fine. Because uh, I, I just think everyone kind of feels that about where they're from. Because like even in Australia, they call it tall poppy syndrome. Where right. they cut the tallest poppy down. That's, that's what I, I think that's does. a societal thing. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Like, that's why... See, when you say it's a 
Glasgow strong thing, I don't think, I really don't think it is. I think it's like everywhere in the UK is like that. Because when you speak so to do anyone, you think, like, seriously, if you speak to anyone that lives abroad, they all say that about So do you home. think that the Scousers are like exceptions that prove the rule? Type thing, so they 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 support each other and they they. Like, so I know a comedian called Gary because I I think Liverpool, Newcastle, Belfast, maybe Dublin to an extent. They I think all of these areas are quite the same that they do support their own. Whereas like London and stuff, they don't really have proper area. I think Glasgow is a stronghold that cares about their own. They maybe, but like everywhere has that problem. Or like when you go to something different, like your pals and all that will slag you. Everyone in the UK pro- has that problem. Mm. When you go, when you go try to do something, when you started your band, you would definitely get shit for it. When I've started, when I started posting on social media, I get shit for it. You'll get shit for being a comedian. I'll just but bother. when people find, like, if if you were just came up on someone's TikTok and you're Glaswegian and they found what you said funny, and they're Glaswegian, they love you for being Glaswegian. But I, right. I maybe agree with you. Yeah. But we are very much like that. We do love our own. And like, if I go to Australia, I hang about with Glaswegians because I love love my own. I don't know, man, because like, like I say, I know a comedian called Gary Highland, right? He's from fe- he's fe- Liverpool, right? He's coming on the podcast. I'm hoping to go down Liverpool and do a few shows, right? He does a podcast podcast called What's Happening Podcast, right? Right. And it's with another group of comedians from down there, right? And they hadn't even had it on for that long, mate, and see the love from the Scouser people. It was fucking insane. Like, they just got floods and floods of fucking fans coming. And guaranteed, it's probably because they have a world have set set it for them, right? And, like, the whole, you know what I mean? Yeah. Right? But then you look at how many podcasts are down there and how many of them are so successful. And they're not successful in the way of the UK based are fucking loved. It's all the scouts love them and they love that they're fucking doing this. Mm. That's what it is. Whereas... And what I'm saying is I think that can happen here. No, it has to happen here. But I think it will if someone does it properly. <laughs> That's what I was just about to say. I think, I think that no one for somebody to break that yeah. mold and then people start falling like dominoes and Because and... even you have the potential with your podcast and even you calling that Mark Jenko cunty. I think it plays into it as well. Do you know what I, I mean? I don't think that's bad, Colin, saying the first initial experience we had, he was a cunt. See, that's, that's where I want to break you down and show you that that is part of the problem as well. But how is that bad? Because I still... Because ba- you, can, you can be the other person that doesn't... That can be accepting of anyone to come on. But See, even if you do... I'm accepting of it. I still... But you're on the, a podcast the, calling him cunty. But, but the invitation is... I love this, by the way. I'm not... No, no, no. But the invitation is still there and I have shared But he's stuff. never going to come on now. Do you know what I mean? But it doesn't... But that, I would say that that's his that. problem. Aye. If somebody's... If somebody... If, if, what, but, right, so okay, okay let's, 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 let's look at it from I another I sent him a DM and his response to me, in my opinion, was cunty. He's not calling him a cunt. He's not saying he's a cunt. He's been like, that was a bit cunty. Aye. I'm not calling him a cunt. Otherwise, I wouldn't have shared all his stuff. Right, let's move on. <laughs> no, man. No, no, no. You, you tell me how like you feel as though it's wrong of me to do it. Just then, if other people hear that as well, they're like, okay, maybe he's not accepting for everyone else to come on. Uh, someone someone has to be the middle of it. You have to sack off BBC Scotland or any, because I think Northern Ireland had that problem as well. Like all of them were trying, yeah, to, were trying to go on all the programmes or try to get their script or their play and they've all sacked off and got mm. podcasts glasgow needs to do that as well and if people are going to go alone in glasgow you're just going to have the odd fucking frankie boyle and the odd whatever gary folds and all that but you'll never have an actual good i still community. i don't know man but i'm hoping like because i don't know any glasgow comedians that's what i'm saying like, somebody comedy. even commented like i put up a clip about billy kirkwood other day and like no one like, know who that no, is. I don't know who Billy Kirkwood went, oh, who's is. this guy? And I went, he's like one of, within the Scottish comedy. But that shows you how shit no, it is. I know, mate. Like, the only comedians you know is fucking Larry Dean. And the Fringe is on, and it's and still shit. Mate, right, can we talk about the Fringe? So the Fringe put out their top, I think it was 100 or 50 people to go see, and not one of them was Scottish. Oh, really? It's because they're from Edinburgh. Do you know how ridiculous that is, mate? Yeah. Do you know how hurtful? I mean, it's even I read that, I felt hurt because I was like, look at the amount of Scottish elite comedians that are going there. Frankie Boy wasn't even fucking on it. Mm. Are all the like podcasting type of comedians on it? Like who? No, are they? I don't know. <laughs> like the no, people who do the Have a Word, right, the, the Liverpool, Manchester ones. Yeah, yeah, a lot of them are going as well. Yeah. But you should right. like, I would think as the Edinburgh Fringe is in Scotland, like guaranteed, obviously doesn't have to be 50 Scottish people, but at least get a few in. Yeah. Fair, right. 
we are going to run out of time soon. I think we'll end it here. Are you going to plug? No, oh, you've tried to plug this, haven't you? And you don't, don't even know what it is. Just turned up when you I'm were like, oh, Gavin, can I come on the podcast and plug this? I, but so, then I realised. We right, we'll follow. Where will they follow you? Uh, don't know, man. Whatever you want. Sean Chalmers, <laughs> Fathers Sean, Podcast. Sean Chalmers, the Fathers Podcast. Been a pleasure. It has, Gavin. Go I'm going to fucking fight you right now. I might win that one. <laughs> <laughs> right, in a bit. Love you.